All right, in this video, I want to look at the notion of an annuity due, which is in a type of annuity. And uh, what an annuity due is, it's a, it's a type of annuity where payments or deposits are made at the beginning of each period. So you can kind of think, you know, maybe you want to save up for um, retirement and you're going to put so much money in the bank, say, every month or every year. And, you know, at the end of a, a certain period of time, you want to know, well, how much money do I have in the bank? And this is certainly, I think, much more natural. A lot of us see, you know, uh, compound interest and simple interest, which are certainly, those ideas are used in annuities for sure, but rarely does somebody go to the bank and say, hey, here's $100,000, and, you know, um, hopefully that's going to be enough for when I retire. People don't do that. None of us can, most of us can't afford to do that. We just put uh, a little bit of money in the bank, um, you know, regularly, and we hope that that adds up to something useful. So uh, the formula we're going to use here is the following. So... It says FV that denotes the future value. C is going to be the uh, amount that you put in regularly, the payment or the deposit amount. I is going to stand for the interest rate. Again, you have to convert this to a decimal or things are going to be pretty crazy, as in very crazy. Your answers will just, if you think about it, just won't even make any sense. Um, so we've got I, I, and I. And N is going to be the number of payments. So... Uh, what I'm going to do in my example is just assume, you know, we're getting uh, uh, our interest is accruing uh, annually, so once a year, and I'm going to deposit money once a year. You can certainly modify these formulas uh, without m too much trouble. You know, maybe you decide to invest money monthly, for example. So we can talk about that in a, a different situation or a different video if people want to see that. So, all right, so kind of maybe, a, I don't know, hopefully a realistic example. So suppose you have a kiddo and you want to save some money for their uh, college expenses, and suppose you decide to deposit $1,000 at the beginning of each year for 18 years, and uh, you're getting an interest rate of 5% on your money. We want to know how much money is going to be available for your child when uh, he or she heads off to school. Um, so the way that school's going, probably not enough at this point, right? But uh, we'll forget about that for the moment. So... Let me jot down our formula one more time. All right, so again, C is going to be the amount. Uh, you can think about it as, again, the, the payment or the deposit that you're making, uh, the regular deposit. So we said every year we're going to put $1,000 in there. Okay, I is going to be the interest rate, and we said we're getting an interest rate of 5%. I'm going to put a couple zeros in front of this, and the reason I'm going to do that, um, if you've forgotten how to go from a percentage to a decimal, all we do is we just move the decimal place uh, two places to the left. So if I imagine moving that decimal place uh, two places to the left, I would get uh, 0 0.05, and then I would have some extra zeros, which I don't need. So 5%... Uh, 5% is the same thing as the decimal 0 0.05. And again, this is crucial because otherwise you get some uh, crazy answers. You'll end up having a lot more money in the bank than you certainly should have. And again, you know, if you're, if you're just learning this, a lot of times if you just think about it, if, if the answer is reasonable or not. Okay, so N is going to be the number of uh, periods, which in this case uh, it will be 18 because we're going to do this for 18 years. So we have to just basically fill in our formula and just do a little bit of arithmetic. So, um, so again, C is 1,000. That's what I'm putting out front. And then we have 1 plus, well, let's see, I is going to be 0 0.05, all raised to the N. But again, N is going to be the power of 18 minus 1. Again, we divide all of this by I, which is going to be 0 0.05. And then we multiply that by 1 plus i, which again is 0 0.05. So I'm going to take a few steps. Um, if you're calculator savvy or if you have, you know, some sort of a computer program, you can plug all this in pretty quickly and grind it out. I'm going to take a couple extra steps and just really uh, make sure that I'm doing everything correctly. Well, this is just going to be 1 plus 0 0.05 is 1.05 raised to the 18th power minus 1, again all over 0 0.05, 1 plus 0 0.05, again is 1.05, and 
And now uh, we have to do our order of operations correctly here. So the first thing I'm going to do, we have to do exponents first. So I've got my little handy dandy calculator kind of off here to the side. Certainly can't do this in my head. So 1.05 raised to the 18th power. I'm getting this to be, I'm going to use a few extra decimal places. So 4, or excuse me, 2.4066. One nine, and then it keeps going. Two, three, four. I'm just going to stop it right there. So again, I'm I'm estimating at this point a little bit, and this is something you do have to be careful about. Um, you know, you're dealing with money. You don't want to round things off just sort of arbitrarily because you know over a long period of time, those round off errors are going to accumulate into something significant. So I tend to use more decimal places versus less just to be careful. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the subtraction on top. 2.406619 minus 1. Well, that would leave us with 1.406619, all divided by 0 0.05. And again, we have to multiply that by 1.05. So I'm going to do the division um, inside my brackets. So let's see, 1.40. 6619, I'm going to divide that by uh, 0.05. I'm getting this to be 28.13238. And now, okay, I'm just going to multiply my numbers together. So if I take 1,000 and multiply it by 28.13238, since there's three zeros, that's going to move the decimal place three times. So 1,000 times 28.13238, that's going to give me 28,000, uh, 132.38. And now we're going to multiply that by 1.05. So again, you can kind of see where um, it's important to use uh, more decimal places versus less. And now I'm going to multiply that by 1.05. And this is a good reason why you should probably, you know, if you're doing this for a living, um, you would definitely want to get savvy with a calculator or with a computer program because it will calculate things uh, much more uh, accurately than what I'm doing. I'm certainly being a little bit loose here, so I want to emphasize that. So. Um, I'm going to round up because uh, I've got 0.999, so if I round it up, that would just be a couple zeros. So it looks like we've got 2953. If we round this up, we'll have 900. Zero, zero. So it looks like roughly um, after 18 years, you're going to have $29,539 in the bank. And again, notice your total investment in this case. Well, really, we've invested, you know, 18. Uh, we've made 18 payments of $1,000. So really, you've only put $18,000 into the bank, but you've got um, you know over $29,000 accrued. So kind of amazing to me. Um, you know, you're, you're, this is what they say when they say put your money to work. Your money has been at work, and um, you know that $18,000, you've got an extra uh, over $10,000 just by being a good investor and not touching it. So. Um, all right, I think uh, hopefully this was fairly straightforward. You know, again, you could do the arithmetic a little bit uh, more accurately. And, uh, but really, more than anything, I just want to show how to use the formula and do some basics. So I'm definitely going to do some other examples. Um, and another example, I want to look at it from a slightly different perspective, and we'll do this in a different video. But, you know, suppose we, instead of, you know, depositing a certain amount or a certain uh, period of time, suppose we know how much money we want to have in the bank. So suppose we want to have $30,000 in the bank after 20 years. We know that we can expect an interest rate of 4%. We want to know how much, you know, how much money should we deposit regularly so that at the end of the day we do end up with that $30,000. And a lot of times this is probably, uh, you know, a more realistic thing. You, you know the target you have in mind, and you want to know, well, how much do I need to put in the bank? So we'll do this in a different example. But um, again, I think this is a, you know, uh, I think this is certainly useful math. Uh, you know, it's good to play with these numbers because sometimes the amount that you end up with can can really be surprising. It's either more than you thought, or it could be, you know, less than you thought. So stick around if you want to look at this other example.